Okay, it's two o'clock, so we're going to get started. Welcome everyone to Simply Reports and Introduction Webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah Dixon, and I'm a client services librarian here at Yellowhead Regional Library. Today we will be looking at Simply Reports. Simply Reports makes it easy to create reports in your Polaris ILS. You can create, manage, and produce nearly 150,000 different types of reports. In this webinar, you will get accustomed to the layout and using filters, as well as saving and scheduling reports. If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat window at any time. Also, this webinar will be recorded and available on our website for future use. So first, let's show you what you can do in Simply Reports. So here's an example of a report I created in Simply Reports and exported into Excel. So you can gather quite a bit of information in Simply Reports and use that information for help um, in determining what to weed, in determining um, maybe where to spend more money, um, in finding out uh, charges on patrons' account and who has the most charges at your library, different things like that. But I wanted to show you an example of what you can do in Simply Report. So in this case, you can see um, it's a list of fiction books in a particular library. You can see the call number, the barcode, the author title, and the lifetime cert count for each item. So this is just an example of a report that you could create in Simply. Okay, so how do we access Simply Reports? All of you do have permission to access Simply Reports, and to get there, the first time, you're going to go to Toolkit, Polaris Resources and Training, and you're going to choose Simply Reports. And if you're going to be using Simply Reports quite a bit, I would recommend saving this link onto your favorite so that you can just access it, although you can always go to the YRL website as well. The other thing to take note of is on this page, there's also a guide to Simply Reports. So I'll just open that up for you. So if you're ever wondering what to do, YRL's created this guide and it goes through everything. Um, it's a really handy report or a guide to um, if you're just not quite sure of what to do with filters or tabs or how to build a particular report. Another really handy um, guide to look at is our Simply Reports Depository. And this is a list of really popular reports that have been created for other patron libraries in the past. And I'll just show you. So we have a list at the very top of different reports that you could build broken down by the different types of reports, as well as exactly how to build them. So it'll tell you the description, the columns you need to select, and so on. So this is also a really good place to go if you can't get a hold of someone in YRL or you want to play around with Simply Reports yourself. Um, we definitely recommend going to the depository because it has very popular reports that libraries run. But let's actually go into Simply Reports. Okay, so to log in to Simply Reports, um, your username is your Polaris username. So it's going to be your library code, the first letter of your first name, and your last name. And then whatever your Polaris password is. And then we're going to hit log in. So this is what Simply Reports looks like when you first log in. Um, there are quite a number of tabs, and sometimes it can look overwhelming, but really you're going to focus on certain tabs that you'll probably be going to all the time. So the most common tabs that are used are the Patron tab, the Patron Account tab, the Holds tab, and the Items tab. And then sometimes you will use the My Reports tab, and if you're ever needing help, you can go to the Help tab. So for example, under the Patron tab, you might want to make a list of all of your patrons that have email addresses entered and create a list of this. You could do that in the Patron tab. Under Patron account, you could create um, a list of all outstanding charges that are still on the patron's account. Under holds, you can look up what the top holds are within track, uh, within your library, um, when holds have shipped, so on and so forth. 
And under items, you can look up item information. So if you wanted to create a weeding list or know what's new in your library, you could do that under items. Within each main tab, there are sub-tabs. All of them have list reports, count reports, and statistical reports. And patron and item tabs have history reports as well. So a list report would just have a list of something. So um, for example, if you wanted a list of all of your patrons with the patron code of staff, you would do that maybe in the list report. But under count report, you might just want to know the numbers broke of your patron codes how many patrons you have under each patron code. So the count report would just give you numbers beside each patron code. The statistical report can also gather data on transactions as well. And the history report under patron and items can look up specific history for a 95-day window for a, an item or for a patron. So that's also can come in handy for you. So the list report and the count report look almost identical under all of the tabs and we'll play around with each tab. But the, if you go to the statistical report it looks quite different so we'll spend a bit of time on that as well. And if you look at the item history report or the patron history report it also looks different. So we'll first focus on list and count reports so you can see the basic um, layout for most things in assembly reports, and then we'll spend some time on statistical reports and history reports. Any questions so far? And if you do have a question, you can just type it in in the window on the right side of your screen. Okay, I see no questions so far, but if you have any, just feel free to enter them in at any time. So let's look at a list report first. We'll just stay in the patrons list report tab. So how it's set up is first there's the report output column. So these are all the possible columns in the report listed alphabetically. So let's say in this case we wanted to make a list of all of your patrons with their phone numbers. You just go through the list and you find outputs that, or columns that you would think would be necessary for whatever report you're building. So you can just scroll through. So maybe you would want the barcode. That seems good. So you see patron barcode. If that's something you want to see appearing in your report, you would click on it and then you just move it over to the center. So now it moved from the left to the right. And then you just keep going down. So you're just going to scroll through this and you can't really make mistakes. So it's actually really good practice just to play around with all the different tabs to kind of see what columns even appear. So then we can just continue scrolling through the list and whichever one seems interesting, we can move over. So if we want to um, include the patron email address, we could move that over um, to see if they have their phone number and their email in. Um, we probably want their name. So I would click on patron full name and move down. And you can go in any order. You don't have to go in alphabetical order. We're just starting at the top and working our way down. and then patron telephone, so maybe we'll put that as well. So now we have the columns we want to see. If we hit submit to run this report, it would gather data for all of track. So we definitely want to add filters so that we're limiting to usually our librarians. Sometimes we might want to be adding um, certain date periods or other filters to get the information we're looking for. So. Um, once you've chosen your columns, you would then actually go into the filters. And actually, one other thing I'm just going to mention beforehand is you'll see that there is a third column. You can decide how to sort and how to organize your columns so that, it, um, and this comes in handy if there's um, families with the same last names or um, if you're doing a weeding list and there's um, quite a number of books by a specific author, it can still be alphabetized. So if you want to decide how it's going to be sorted, um, if you don't choose anything, it will just be sorted by how it's organized in this column. But if you want to decide how to sort it, you would click on what you want to sort first. So I'm going to click on full name and then I'm going to move it over. And if I wanted to 
then sort it by email address, I could move it over. So you can just play around. You're just going to, this is what's, these are all the columns that are going to appear, and these are the columns that are selected for sort. And you can also change the order if you started from the top and worked your way down, but you don't actually like the order of how it's showing here. You can click on an item and either move it down or you can move it up, however you like. Also, if you decide you didn't want something in the sort, you can X out of it and then it just it stays here, but it, it's removed from the sort. If you decided you didn't want something here, you would just click on it and then move it back. And then it just moves back to the main list of columns to choose from. And it would go to the very bottom. It doesn't alphabetize it if you moved it over. It just goes to the bottom. So if you made a mistake and then you made a mistake again, you can bring it over. But we're happy with the columns. We just want to add filters so that we're only seeing our library. So we would click on Patron General Filters. And under Filters, you can see that there's quite a lot to choose from if we keep scrolling down. I just hit the plus sign to expand the filters and I can hit the minus sign to close it. So it's blue when it's closed and it's green when it's expanded. So if I just scroll down, the first thing we'll see is patron branch. So often that's almost a guarantee that we're going to be clicking that. So we would click branch and then you would just go through the list and find your library. So let's just say we're Alberta Beach right now. And depending on which library we, ch uh, uh, we choose, some of the other information might change slightly below. Um, but we'll just leave it on Alberta Beach for now. There's also other types of filters you can choose from. Um, there's date filters as well. So I'll just expand to show you. There's specific date filters and there's relative date filters. So I'll just show you what the difference is. With the, this patron date filters, you have a date range that you're choosing specific dates. So let's say you wanted to include registration date. You would check mark registration date and hit the calendar and then you would choose a date that you're interested in. So you can just go through the calendar and find the date you're interested in and it populates the information. But now it's a very specific date and it's running for this specific date. You can also choose not present. But again, this is stuff you want to play around with. Sometimes it's good to have a question and then you can find out um, play or by playing around with the information and all the filters that are available because you can't really mess anything up. Then there's also relative date filters. So with relative date filters, it's um, a relative date. So it's looking at registration date between 30 days or 30 months or 30 years ago in the report run date. So um, you can check mark registration date and you would choose, you would just put a number in this field and then you could choose either days, months, or years. Or you can choose registration date more than. So you have some options and it's definitely worth just expanding all of the filters to play around with. There's also other types of filter options that you'll have under each tab. So there'll be miscellaneous filters and it really depends on which tab you're under. So right now we're under the patron tab. So most of the filters have to do with patrons. If we were under the item tab, the filters would mostly have to do with item records. So uh, it's always just good to go through it and see because sometimes you don't realize that that's an option for a filter. And um, when you look at it, you can actually get some data that you never knew was possible. So let's say we were happy with this report. We would just hit submit and we would see the report. So here's the report. We got 639 results for this particular library with email address and their phone number. And if you wanted to download it to Excel, if we were happy with this report, you would just check mark the download report output and then you'd hit this download icon. And then you can just open it and you would just play around with the file in Excel and you can save it onto your computer or forward it to whoever you want. And this might just take a second. The other options you have while this loads is you can actually save the report parameters. 
let's take a look at this for a second. Any questions while this loads? So the question is, how do I get a list of just the patrons with no email addresses? So you can do that back in patron reports. Let me just show you. So what you would do is you would, under patron miscellaneous filters, you would check mark email address and choose not present. And that way you're only seeing patrons without an email address. So that's really, really handy. And what you can even do if you wanted is you can choose um, notification option of email address and then choose email address not present. And then you would be able to see all of your patrons that have a notification option of email address, but they don't have an email address present. So you'd probably want to contact them. Perfect. Any other questions? Okay, let's take a look at this Excel file. Of course it didn't load. <laughs> I'm going to close that and we'll try again. Okay. And you will get this pop-up when you open it up in Excel, and I always just say yes. And then you can see the report we created, and you would just expand all the columns just to show, to show it the way you want it to look. And then you can play around with it, organize it, sort it, um, however you like once it's in Excel. But we will not save that. We'll continue on. The next thing you can do is you can actually save the report parameters for later use. And we're going to spend some more time on this later because this can really come in handy if there's a report that you need to build often. So I would definitely recommend um, um, saving certain reports. Like I would play after um, this week's sessions and next week's and the following weeks. I would play around in uh, Simply Reports. And if there's certain reports that you want to build, um, it's always nice to have them saved and running on their own, so you just need to log into um, Simply Reports afterwards and you don't have to remember exactly how you built it. The other thing you can do is you can create record sets. So record sets in Polaris are really handy. So if there's ever a certain situation where you need to do a bulk change, um, on a number of items or a number of patrons. Um, again, be careful with bulk changes because it changes it and you can't go back. But sometimes it's necessary if you've decided to not use a certain patron code anymore. Um, for example, that's something that you would want to create a record set for uh, and then you could do a bulk change. So if you want to create a pet patron record set, you would just click on this and then give this record set a name. So you can do that with patrons and with items. So that can come in handy for you. Okay, I'm just going to go through a few more of the um, tabs just to kind of show you because we have uh, focused on uh, patron list, but I just want to show you how um, it looks under patron account. So under account, the columns are slightly different. They would apply more to account um, information. So you can see the account transaction information. Um, you can choose transaction type, which wasn't showing before in patrons. Um, and it'll also have, so in the patron tab, we only saw patron information here. You can find out the item information and the patron information um, just to give you more information about the patron's account. And you can also see that the filters are slightly different. So we have the same patron filters as in the patron tab, but we also have item filters and patron account filters. <coughs> So I'll just click on one of them just to show you. So under patron account um, miscellaneous filters, you can choose a transaction amount greater than. So maybe you only want to look at transactions that are over $10 or $20. You could choose that or where their charges are over a certain amount of money. So, and then also you can play around with items. So if you just want to know items that maybe were at a particular branch or have a certain CERC status, you could incorporate that into your report as well. 
And if you're not quite sure what you can build in this, um, next week's webinars will show you examples under every single tab of useful reports that libraries like to run. So um, right now we're just kind of showing you the layout and kind of what type of things are under each um, column and filter, but we will spend more time actually building example reports under all of the tabs. So I'll quickly go to holds. So again, holds will have slightly different information. It'll be hold, like here it has hold expiration date and so on. So you can just see it's all about holds um, and items which are relevant for holds and patrons as well and so on. And, so, and with items, it's about the item. But again, they all look very, very similar. Um, under item list reports and item count reports, you have even more options. You actually have some bibliographic record filters which can come in handy, um, especially if you want to look at the publication year, if you're looking at for weeding reports or something like that, or the age of your collection, you can look at publication year ranges, which is kind of nice as well. And you can also check checkbox filters to make sure that all of your items are displaying in pack the way they should be. Um, or if the call number is not present, you could do that. Um, you could look at that. So there's quite a few different things that that are normally that have check marks within Polaris in an item record that you can search for in here to see if it's not matching the way the formatting should be according to your local library policy. So it's just nice and handy. And also you can look up price not present. So if you want to make sure that there's prices on all of your items in case an item gets lost and you want to be able to charge the, um, the patron for the item, if there's no price present, you can't charge them anything. So you might want to make sure that all of your items have a price entered. So maybe you would run a report where the price isn't present, create a record set, and then slowly work on that record set, just as an example. So I'll just show you count reports and how they look, uh, how they're very similar, but they have sometimes slightly different features. So often with count reports, it'll look almost identical, but if you go to the bottom, sometimes they'll give you an option for sum. So you might want to know the sum uh, balance on what's still on a patron's account, or um, the sum item price of all of the items that are charged, that, that still there's still charges for on a patron's account. So you would maybe want to move that item over, that column over. Um, for your output, and it also gives you instructions under patron count report, for example, it shows you outstanding balance options. So this option below may be used with some balance. So I would have to be using some balance in this particular case. I'll just move some item price back. And then I could choose if I want to look at outstanding charges, credits, deposits, and so on. And you can also look at history options. So in this case, we would have to choose some transaction amount and choose specific history. And then I'll just show you holds, because holds also has one small little difference on the count side. You also have this top little area. So if you wanted to just see what's really popular in um, track right now, you can actually just look at the top number. Like So let's say you just want to know the 50 most popular titles. You would just type in 50. You would choose the columns you want to see. So often it would just be the author and title, and you would hit submit, and then you would just see the top 50 titles within track. So you do have some options just that are quick and easy for running uh, a report very quickly um, under the holds count report. And then one other thing I'll just show you under items, count report. There's also some as well, and this can um, really come in handy if you're trying to um, find the sum for a specific collection um, or Dewey range. You can look at the sum of the item lifetime circ count or uh, the sum item price or the year to date or the previous year um, circ count. So that can come in handy when you're trying to build reports. Any questions before we move on to statistical reports? Okay, so these pages do look a little bit different. 
I'm just going to go to patron. And statistical. All the statistical report pages look very similar to each other, but they do look different than the list reports and count reports. So these statistical reports are gathering quite a bit more data than the list and the count reports, so there's less options. So in a way, these are easier to um, create because there's only so many um, filters that you can um, add to these particular reports. So often you'll just be choosing what you're interested in looking at. So um, you can look at check-ins, checkouts in this case, items that are claimed lost, claimed never had, patron registrations created or deleted. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to choose the created ones. And then you can just choose an activity summary, um, so in general, or you could break it down by patron branch, patron code. So it really does, limit. like there's only a few options once you've kind of made your first choice. And you can keep running the reports until you get the information you want. So you're just going to kind of play around um, with the statistical reports. Um, and once you see one or two, you'll kind of get the idea of how to use them. But it is going to get you a lot of information, which is nice. And then you can also choose how the information is broken down. So in this case, let's say we only want to look at it monthly. And we can choose year and month or just month if we're looking at longer than one year period. And then in most cases, um, you're going to be choosing your library. And most of the time, you're going to be running the report by transacting organization only. Sometimes you'll want to know the transacting user, and sometimes you'll want to know the transacting workstation, depending on the size of your library. But most of the time, you'll just be leaving it on run report by transacting organization only. And then I'll just choose another library again. And then most of the time, you're just choosing a date range. So I like to use relative dates most of the time. So let's say we want to look at the last 150 days. You can. There are some filters in here, but they are limited, and you don't can't always use all of the filters with every single report. So if it's grayed out and it doesn't let you check it, like in this case, I can't check patron code. Um, it's just because it can't gather that information as well because it's already gathering quite a bit. So if I just hit submit now for a statistical report, it comes back blank and it's telling me to save the report parameters. And this is because it's gathering so much information. So if I want to um, run this report and it's during really busy peak hours, it actually is better to save it and then run it in the middle of the night. In this case, I'm going to run it right now, so I'm going to check mark run report now. And if it's in the morning or if it's not so busy, you can run it right now. Um, and it, but it does let you know that it could slow Polaris down. And then I'm just going to hit submit. And then it's just going to tell you how many, um, in this case, um, patrons were registered, and it breaks it down by which month and so on and lets you know the information. And again, I chose a smaller library, but it, it has some really useful information for you. Lastly, I'll show you the patron history reports. And not everybody has this tab. Um, if you don't have access to the history reports tab under patron or item, just send uh, me or someone else in client services an email, and uh, we can give you uh, that tab if, if it's necessary for uh, what you do at your library. So in on these um, tabs, it's very simple. Basically, you're just typing in either patron barcode or item barcode and a start and an end date, except you can only look at a 95-day window. It doesn't have to be the last 95 days, but it has to be a 95-day window. So you could go back like two years ago for a 95-day window, but it's just something to keep in mind. And I'm not going to run this report right now because it's extremely slow. This one takes even longer than the statistical report. It can take five to ten minutes to run. Um, but it can be very useful. Um, I find the most common use for um, under item history reports, for example, is if a DVD was returned with only one disc in it and there's supposed to be two, and the last borrower got it that way and the previous library forgot to check or something, you can't charge the previous borrowers and you can't contact them if they're not your patrons, but you can at least find out who other borrowers were 
for the item and you could contact that library just to see if that patron maybe has it at home. So that can come in handy sometimes. Okay, so any questions before we move on to saving and scheduling reports? And we are almost done this webinar. Short and sweet. Okay, so we're going to create a hold statistical report and then we are going to save it so that it runs. So again, I had mentioned this before, you can save a report if you want to be able to run it again at another time. You can also schedule a saved report so that it runs for you whenever you want and you just have to log in to view the run report. And again, this is handy if you want to, um, want to run something every month so you don't have to remember the criteria you built previously. Also, some reports do need to be run on the first of the month because that matters um, as the data will change, like for example, how many patrons you currently have. Um, if you ran a report on the 15th of the month, um, but you wanted to know about it from the first, it's, it's going to show you the same number regardless because Polaris only knows how many patrons you have right now. So it's very important to run it on the first of the month if you're just trying to look at the previous month. So again, saving it and scheduling the report comes in handy in this case. Excuse me, I'm just about to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so um, let's actually save and schedule a report. So um, one other thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure it's a relative date filter when you're saving and scheduling a report. If you chose two specific dates, like a start date and an end date, whenever you run the report, it will always run the report for that specific start date and that specific end date. So you always want to choose a relative date filter. That way it's looking back at the last month. Okay. So you can create a saved report in any tab but history, and so we're going to do one under statistical reports. Uh, so let's say you want to know how many items your library ships to other libraries each month, broken down by which library you are sending to. So to build this report, we're going to choose holds become shipped, and we're going to choose destination branch. And if you didn't want it to be broken down by destination branch, you could choose either one of these and it would show you the same information. And then we're going to choose monthly and we're going to choose transacting organization only. We don't need to know the transacting user details. So I'm going to choose a bigger library just so we have a bit more information. Okay, and we're just going to look back at one month. And we're going to run the report now and hit submit. So we can see the data now, but we can also choose to save this for another time. So let's say we like this report and we want it to run the first of the month every month. What we're going to do is we're going to click on Save Report Parameters for Later Use, and then you're going to give it a name. So we're going to say um, Items Your Library Ships, and then hit Save. So you can call it whatever you like. So now it's been saved. So where is it located once we've saved it? We're going to X out of this, or we could open it in Excel, whatever you prefer. Um, and then you're going to go to My Reports. So under My Reports, you're going to see Saved Reports, and you're going to see each type of report that you can create under all of these options. But we made a Hold Statistical report, so we're going to click on Hold Statistical, and here we're going to see all of the whole statistical reports that we have saved in the past. So we just created items your library ships and if we wanted to I could check mark it and run it right now on my own. So you can just leave it as saved and you don't have to schedule a report. You would just go into your saved reports, find the right one for you, check mark it and hit run report. Um, if you decided you didn't like the report you can delete it. There's also an option to edit. 
you can't really edit much about the report. It actually doesn't give you all of the options to rebuild the report. So most of the time you're just going to want, if you did something wrong or you're not getting the information you want, most of the time you'll just want to delete it and recreate the report. The other thing you can do is you can schedule the report. So let's say we like this report and we want it to run monthly. I'm going to hit schedule report. And then you're going to give it a name. So it can be the exact same name. Library ships. And you can give it a description, you don't have to, and then we're going to choose a date. So we want it to start March 1st, and you can give it an expiration date if you like, or you can leave it blank. And you can also choose how often you want it to run. So you can choose for it to run one time, run weekly, or run monthly. So I'm going to say we want to run it monthly on the day of the month, which is the first, and just choose some time in the middle of the night. So that way it's not going to slow Polaris down and then you would hit save schedule. So now you've saved this. So now if you want to view all of your scheduled reports that have been run on their own, you would go to file maintenance and you would just choose the type of report. So if it's a saved report that you created, but you haven't scheduled it, it would be listed here. But if you've actually had it scheduled, so it's running on its own, it appears here. So it's just running it for you on its own all the time, and you just have to log in, and you would just click on this, and then it would open it up in Excel for you. So it's wanting to open it up for me, and I would just take a look. So what's really nice is if you forget to go in for five months, it has the last five months for you, and then um, you're good to go with all of the data you were looking for. And if you want to delete them once you've used the data that, or gathered the data you want, you can just select whichever files you want to delete and hit Delete Selected Files. The other thing is, is if you want to cancel a scheduled job, you can choose scheduled jobs and just you have to remember if it was a daily schedule, a weekly schedule, or a monthly schedule, but you would just find the correct schedule and you would just hit delete and that way it's not running anymore for you if you've gotten all the data that you want. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to mention is help. So. It's always good to go through the YRL uh, documents that we talked about, but if you're wanting to look up a specific um, word or term or you're not really sure um, some of the details, you can always go into the Simply Reports Help um, section as well. Um, it has it broken down by the specific type of reports, but you can also search a specific term or keyword that you're looking for. So that is an introduction, and next week we will be going through actual reports, and then the following week we'll be going through pivot tables and how to use them with some of the reports you can create in Simply Reports. Are there any questions before we wrap this up? Okay, well, thank you all for attending this webinar. If you have any questions afterwards, please feel free uh, to contact me um, or anyone else in client services. Um, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much. Oh, I see there's one question. Oh, thank you. Have a great day.